Andy Farrell has announced his 33-man Rugby World Cup squad for Ireland. So we're going to quickly go through it. Then we'll talk about who's missed out from the initial 44-man squad that was picked for training. And then just go through looking at the depth in each position. So forwards, we've got Ryan Bird, Finley Bealham, Ty Byrne, Jack Conan, Kenan Doris, Ty Furlong, Ian Henderson, Rob Herring, Bonin Kelleher, Dave McCoyne, Jeremy Lockman, Joe McCarthy, McCarthy, Peter Romani, Tom O'Toole, Andrew Porter, James Ryan, Dan Sheen and Josh Van de Fleer. In the backs, we've Bundy Aki, Ross Byrne, Craig Casey, Jack Crowley, Keith Earls, James Gibson Park, Mac Hansen, Robbie Henshaw, Hugo Keenan, James Lowe, Stuart McCluskey, Connor Murray, Jimmy O'Brien, Gary Ringrose, and Jonathan Sexton is the captain. So 18 15 split. We have seen other coaches go for 19 14, but it was going to be somewhere there or thereabouts. In terms of players missing out from the initial training squad, then you have Gavin Coombs, who was released back to his province earlier on in the month, then Keen Healy, who cruelly got injured last night right on the eve of the squad announcement hopefully it's not the end of his career and we see him back for Leinster and possibly for Ireland as well in the future we then have Kim Prendergast who you know many probably felt would have um would have possibly made the the squad given that Gavin Coombs was, was released and people thought it was maybe between those two for a pick, but it turned out that he probably lost out, I think, to Joe McCarthy overall in, in the kind of shuffle of players. Then we have Tom Stewart, who I think was always for choice in terms of hookers and had a lot to do to force his way in. I was basically relying, I think, on an injury to actually get in there, but he definitely will be on call. And then Kieran Treadwell, who was also released back to his province in terms of the back stem we got Caelan Blade got released earlier on in the month Kieran Frawley who you know I thought might have gone in because of his versatility I think he probably lost out ultimately to Stuart McCluskey who else then we got Calvin Nash released earlier as well Jamie Osborne who uh, didn't make the final cut. I think he was released too. And then Jacob Stockdale, who played last night. But, you know, it was kind of clear the fact that Earls was stood down because of having a knock and Stockdale was played, that Earls was going to go ahead of him. So in terms of the squad itself, in terms of depth, we start with the front row and loose head. So first choice is Andrew Porter. I still don't think he's been in the best of form this year and we need to see his best come the Rugby World Cup so hopefully he does hit form then next choice then is Dave Kilcoyne who has a bit of a knock and then Jeremy Lockman who came in as you know possible injury cover you know uh, earlier on in I think in the week right and ends up going because Healy picks up that injury last night so I think you know on the loose head side, we're a little thin on the ground, especially because Killer has that injury that he's carrying as well. Into Hooker then, we've got Dan Sheen as first choice, then Roland Kelleher and Rob Herring. So, you know, both Sheen and Kelleher are carrying knocks, but they believe both of them should be ready for the Ruby World Cup. But, you know, ready for the Ruby World Cup doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be you know, set to go right from the off in terms of the first game against Romania. So you might see Rob Herring starting that one and maybe against Tonga as well. But, you know, I think overall depth there, pretty happy with it. And Stewart as well, although he is a little bit inexperienced, being, you know, the next man up outside the squad, you know, it's not too bad. And then we have Barron as well behind him. So Hooker, you know, we want Sheen and Keller for fit because uh, two of them are exceptional but Herring showed last night what he can give there as well so I think overall depth wise doing pretty well there on to tight head then you know Tyke Furlong is undoubtedly the first choice there he hasn't been fit and hasn't been on form either so that is a bit of a worry Finley Bealham you know 
um, deputized for him really well in the Six Nations. So at least if he has to come in, we know he can do a job. Tom O'Toole did really well in the Six Nations too. He's a guy who can get to go forward in the loose and can kind of handle himself in the tight as well. So for tight head, I'd like to see Furlong hitting form. And if he does, then I think we're set pretty well there. Into the second row then, you know, I'd say that the first choice second row would be James Ryan and then uh, Ty Byrne would be my choices there. Then you'd have Ian Henderson next. Um, you got Ryan Baird, who is like a second row, come back row. And then Joe McCarthy, who has, you know, really impressed in the War of Games and has basically come from being an outsider to being someone who could be an integral part of the squad going into the World Cup. So really well done for him. So I think in terms of locking stocks, we, you know, were pretty well served. The worry is that Henderson and Byrne tend, do tend to pick up knocks. So, you know, the likes of Bird and McCarthy are going to have to step up, I think, in big games because we are, we are going to pick up injuries at some point during the pool stages. Then into the back row. So my first choice back row would be Peter Manny, Josh Randafleer, and Kaylin Doris. And, you know, in terms of then backup, you've got, uh, you have Conan. And as I said, you've got Bird who can kind of cover six as well. He can kind of slot into the back row there. So, you know, back row again. Um, we have some some decent cover there. I think we have the likes of Conan as well. That if he gets a chance to play in that back row, he'll have something to prove as well, and hopefully that will kind of spur him on to a good performance the way we've seen him do in the past. But I think in terms of the the forward squad, you know, once McCarthy was kind of um showed what he could do, I don't think there's any too many surprises in the choices there onto the backs then so at nine james gibson park clearly the number one nine and then it's between conor murray and craig casey for his backup i think those two will kind of switch around you know i think murray has been a lot better this season than he was in the last kind of two or three seasons for ireland and casey has um you know come on as well so both of them, I think, are able backups, but there is still a big drop down from, from Gibson Park. I think he just gives us something else, you know, that his, not only his speed to the rock, but speed of deciding what to do. He, he generally knows before he gets to the ball where it's going to go, and he's just so quick with the pass to, to give it out, and that really helps us, especially when we're under pressure at the breakdown. On to 10s then, Johnny Sexton is... Number one, I'd say, you know, that uh, Crowley is probably second choice at the moment, leapfrogged ahead of Ross Byrne. But either of those would be, you know, uh, good deputies to have in. And I think feel more comfortable with them coming in than it was maybe last World Cup if the, you know, um, if the likes of McCarthy had to step in there or Joey Carberry. You know, I think the step down from Sexton to these guys is not as big as it was in the the last World Cup, and they've had plenty of time as well because Sexton has been out with injury and then with his band too. So at ten, you know, um, I think we're we're well served. Now, when it comes to when we get tested, we really find out though whether we are or not if Sexton is out for any of the big games. On to centres then. Center partnership starting for me is Henshaw and Ringrose, and then you have Bundyaki and Stuart McCluskey there as well. I'm so happy for Stuart McCluskey because I, I thought that he might miss out to someone like Frawley that offered more kind of versatility, but you know, he made it in there. And those centers, honestly, any of them, any of them starting, I wouldn't have a worry. You know, um, I do think that Henshaw and Ringrose, as I said, are our are, are best pick. But if you had Aki McCluskey in there as well, I'd be fairly happy with that. And it's not as big a drop down 
as we've maybe had in past World Cups from the starting two centers. So that's good to see. Then onto the back three. So I think the the starting back three will be James Lowe, um, Mack Hansen and Hugo Keenan. I think all of those have proved why they are the starters in their position. And then, you know, um, we have then Keith Earls and Jimmy O'Brien providing the cover there. So I think Earls, he's, you know, he's got nothing left to prove, I think, in an Ireland shirt. You know, he's, he's reached his 100 caps. He's, you know, if, if he has a chance, more often than not, he's going to score it. He's decent in the air. And, you know, sometimes he can be get, get caught out defensively, but what winger doesn't? Then Jimmy O'Brien, he just covers so many positions as well. So I think it's, you know, overall, it's a really strong squad. I'm very happy with it. And, you know, it's not going to be for the lack of, of quality personnel that we, we fail at this World Cup. It's just going to be, you know, we saw last night against Samoa where if a team can get at us and stop us playing our own game, then we can be in a little bit of trouble. So it's about kind of that on-field leadership, I think, is going to be very important. Getting getting that kind of position on the field where the players can change things themselves and can dig themselves out of a hole. But overall, pretty pleased with the squad. Let me know what you think. Thank you.